Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And joining us, we have Tim Alexander, our geopolitical military strategic analyst. And at the bottom of the hour, Chris Harris with an update. Uh, uh, Tim, you pop in on many different shows. We had you back in on Tuesday. There's a lot of developments going on. Uh, give us the top stories and where things are going in terms of your analysis. Well, uh, you've had a really massive uh, blast in Damascus, killed uh, 53 people, injured uh, 235. Uh, it was near the Russian embassy, which, uh, you know, is just kind of a slap in the face to uh, the Russian bear. Um, you know, uh, we, the, the Western media won't call it a terrorist incident because it's our terrorist. It's uh, NATO tax dollars at work. Uh, but mostly they killed uh, unarmed, innocent civilians, men, women, and children. Um, and it's it's more of the same. Uh, they throw everything they can at uh, poor Syria, and uh, the Syrians are pretty tough people. They they've withstood it. Uh, they're still uh, they're still winning basically. If it wasn't for uh, virtually unlimited billions of petrol dollars that uh, Saudi Arabia, um, Qatar, uh, and uh, of course NATO and, and Israel can throw in, uh, the war would have been over virtually the day it started. Uh, the Syrian rebels, uh, and they call themselves rebels, they're really foreign mercenaries, are threatening Hezbollah with a 48-hour deadline. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, this is raising the stakes uh, in the Middle East a, a bit. Iran uh, is conducting a, a military drill over the next three, three days, uh, basically over the weekend. Uh, you can read a lot into that or not much into it. Probably uh, the truth is somewhere uh, in between. Um, the powers that be can widen this into a global war really at any time. Uh, things haven't quite got to the point where they're ready to do that yet, but there's, they continue to work in that direction. Um, it is absolutely um, insane to want to create a regional war in the Middle East. Um, the only uh, victor in that war will be death and destruction. Uh, there, there's it, it, certainly Israel will not profit by it. Israel will be largely destroyed. Of course, right. the uh, Iran will be destroyed in Syria and, and uh, Saudi Arabia and so forth. The Western economies, uh, the hit from uh, the destruction of the oil fields, the shutting down of the Straits of Hormuz, etc., uh, that will do the uh, global economy, and that will be the uh, not just the straw that broke the camel's back, but the 10 tons of straw that broke the camel's back um, and shattered it into a million pieces. And, uh, you know, there, there's, there's no upside to this for any rational human being, but when you're dealing with uh, the demonic forces that we are in, in, uh, with the global banking cartel, um, these people are demonic. These people are absolutely evil to the core, and they want death and destruction. You know, uh, um, uh, I remember reading a day or two ago a quote by Ted Turner, and he's one of these characters that uh, it promotes, uh, you know, we need population reduction. He thinks that the ideal population of, of Earth should be somewhere between 200 and 300 million uh, human beings. Now, keep in mind, we have over 7 billion. And, gee, I just guess maybe somehow that he's including himself in that 200 to 300 million, that his carcass uh -huh. is so valuable. I would think that you're probably right on there, that uh, he must think he's extremely valuable, therefore we need to keep him around so yeah. he can make sure he keeps the pedal to the metal of killing off the rest of us. Oh, yeah, absolutely, because, uh, uh, you know, he's ordained by himself as uh, what other, and uh, the rest of us, well, we're unnecessary eaters. Yeah, so well, we, what we, he is is actually he's the latest, uh, he's the latest incarnation of Kali, the destroyer from ancient Hindu uh, 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 religions. Yeah, he Could wants be. to bring forth the Kali Yuga. He, yeah. uh, 
media once made a crack about uh, uh, what a joke uh, Christianity was, and I thought, you know what, what a what an idiot. Uh, the guys well, had uh, so much uh, given to him, and he say he's had such success, and yet he has to slap God in the face. And uh, you know, what a pathetic individual, and what a sad eternity he's looking at. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. So, um, if we look through the uh, list of uh, news items today, uh, the World Bank, World War One wasteland photos, and you got some interesting photos here dealing with what happened. Uh, then you have the mini uh, stealth uh, assassin drone, Big Brother Watch. And well, here, here, yeah, when we get in, and, and, and Pepsi, by the way, our former Speaker of the House of uh, Representatives and now Minority Leader, she backs Obama Pelosi, on a Pelosi. Pelosi, me. Pelosi, Pelosi, Pelosi. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Back Obama on the secret execution of Americans without trial by uh, stealth technology, drone technology. Uh, Americans are lulled into gaga land by the globalist owned Zionist ran mainstream news media. But the, what we are waking up to is a world that's far more dangerous than Brave New World 1984, etc. We're looking at a world where the federal government will have tens of thousands of drones, some of them the size of insects, that can spy on us continuously at all times and take any of us out for any reason. And remember, you know, what the, the uh, communists did in the Soviet Union. They frequently arrested people without any reason at all, drug them off, tortured them, often killed them or sent them to a gulag simply to terrorize their neighbors and their friends and their relatives. Yeah, well, I remember the, the comments by um, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Uh, if I see uh, black ski masked uh, guys coming to my home, I know it's the final battle. It's not a pre-battle where we may get out of prison later. This is the end of the game. This is at the point where you know that you're likely to die, so you've got to make sure enough of them die that they won't come back let, let to your neighbor's Let me quote home. exactly what he said. Yeah. Uh, he said this in the Gulag Occupation. I can't talk to you, sorry. I'm still getting over. By the way, your medicine is helping. Uh, your your Nutridine, I think, is great. Uh, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, Without it that, is. by the way, you'd be you'd be well on your way to going to hospital. So we got it to you just well, in time. I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. It's uh, yeah, this yeah. flu has been genetically engineered. It's very nasty. Yeah, okay, and also well, it can relapse. You can have this. The flu can last, by the way, two months or longer, and it can relapse. So anybody out there, if you haven't got the flu yet, get on the Nutrimeds. If you have the flu, get on them immediately and stay on them for a period of time after and stay on a maintaining dosage. We now have, by the way, the avian flu H7N3 exploding in Mexico. And if it cross uh, combines or synapses with the H3N2 V, we're going to have a super plague this spring. Well, that's what they want. That's what they want. Now, let me read uh, from... Uh, Quote, and how we burned in the camps later thinking. What would things have been like if, if every security operative, when he went out at night to make an arrest, had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family? Or if during periods of mass arrest, for example in Leningrad when they arrested a quarter of the entire city, people had not simply sat there in their lairs piling with terror at every bang on the downstairs door and at every step on the staircase, but it understood they had nothing left to lose, and it boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush a half dozen people with axes, hammers, pokers, or whatever else was at hand, and end quote. Basically, you can't go off to the slaughter. Be a man. Be a human being. Fight the, the demonic evil in your midst, and you know what? You just might win because God's on your side. Exactly. Back in a moment. Welcome 
Welcome back. And, uh, Tim, the, um, the latest news, of course, if you look at the latest news, we, of course, they have the State of the Union address last week by the liar-in-chief. And that's what we have to say. How can you tell Obama's lying? Because air is moving over his vocal cords. Um, well, I think, he can be, I think he's figured out how to lie without even moving his lips, but go ahead. <laughs> right, and the other thing, of course, he does is he actually tells you in one statement that, you know, how wonderful it is we need smaller government, we're not going to add another dime to all the different uh, costs for all the zillion programs that he wants to do. And on the other hand, he says, basically, the American dream won't happen unless collective communism gives it to you by taking it from those that, that make to those that take. And uh, I, I'm, I'm boggled. I'm thinking, excuse me, my sweat is not somebody else's right. Yes, we want a collective society that protects p- people in the safety social net, but collectivism has never filled the, bo- the stomachs of the Russians, the Chinese, or anybody else. Absolutely collectivism not. always causes degradation of society. Collectivism gets gets rid of, I say, it, it literally dulls the diamonds and polishes the pebbles. It destroys the food supply, the economy, and even the stability of society. It does nothing it, it, but destruction. It is a, a methodology for those who, at the very top, control everything to exercise that control in a slightly different way. Uh, you know, in the Soviet system, you had a very small group of people who were running things. And communism was merely a methodology for them to to exercise that power. They didn't believe in that nonsense. Heck, even uh, Karl Marx didn't believe it. And he was paid uh, by the global banking cartel to to sit in the British Museum and ride his Das Kapital uh, with eagles. It was all nonsense. He knew it was nonsense. Uh, but he was creating a uh, a false. Uh, a kind of religion almost that they could sell to the masses of uh, stupid people and uh, to use as a way to get absolute power and to break the backs of those that had power and they did that very effectively I mean uh, in in pre-revolutionary Russia you had uh, the church was very powerful the Orthodox Church you had uh, various individuals and nobles and you had a, a growing middle class and and uh, they, they destroyed that uh, and set up their their revolutionary systems using absolute terror. Uh, now, Obama's they, not going to succeed. And that, what's amazing to me is the hubris of Obama and the Iraqis, including by the comments by Biden, that if you don't can't get a fully automatic weapon, go and get a shotgun. My wife has two at home, he says. I'm thinking, is a man out of his mind? Doesn't yeah. understand? Shotguns are a great idea. I have shotguns here. And they're a great short-range defense, but to be honest with you, you want to have 30 caliber guns as well. You want to have maybe concealed carry handguns, and you want to be prepared with other things, maybe crossbow, maybe other unconventional weapons, which I'm going to post up, some ideas of how people can make well, them Well, if, if someone's uh, 100 yards away with a high-powered rifle, and you've got a nice 12-gauge double with double-odd shot, uh, you're going to die. Because he's going to blow your brains out long before your double odd shot will even think about getting to him, and and oh, uh, Biden knows that Biden is is a political whore who has sold himself out to the globalist. He has betrayed this country just like all these characters in the District of Criminals. We have some of the worst characters in American history in Washington right now, and it's that way by design. They, they, you know, this did, we didn't get here overnight, and uh, it's not that politics always hasn't been kind of crooked. Of course, it has, but still, even the crooks used to have a certain level, uh, certain things they wouldn't go past. They were, they were at heart still Americans. Okay, uh, many of these people, they're not even Americans. They don't care about America. Uh, They'll put Israel ahead of America in half a heartbeat. They'll put the global banking cartel interest ahead of America in half a heartbeat. They don't care. And it's taken a long time to get a majority of people in both houses of Congress that corrupt. But, you know, when you have infinite money, that's what you have. By the way, I want to 
wanted to, to cover a story I hadn't posted yet on my site, but the Walmart indicator. Uh, it indicates we're heading for a stagflationary disaster. Uh, last month, um, Walmart came out with some statistics that absolutely uh, shocked everyone. Is the worst sales uh, start uh, in seven years? Um, it just, uh, you know, it, it blew everybody away. Now, Walmart is where you go to shop when times are a little bit tough. Uh, you pass by the uh, the better stores, and you say, "Well, you know, maybe in a few months we'll we'll, we'll uh, upscale a little bit." The meantime, well, we're just gonna we're gonna get by. And when Walmart is starting to have a bad time, you know that the economy is in deep doggy doo doo. Right. And we are. And it's it's not getting worse. I mean, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. And we are posed on um, just a massive explosion globally in terms of Well, it may uh, not even happen in America. Wars. It, it could happen anywhere. It could happen in Venezuela. It could happen in Europe. It could be an internal conflict with a civil war in China. It's not just America that's in trouble. Every nation on earth is in trouble. Absolutely. And, I, and, when anything, and when anything goes wrong, America is going to blow up. The economy will, you'll see the devaluation of the dollar and martial law. It's probably the only country, though, where there's not enough military armies on earth to control the population. And what, what you're going to see is that they will be spending their time protecting, the, yeah, they're protecting the, the leaders and the elite because they can't confront the public. As I stated before, within 12 days, either civilian militia or gangs will run every city and town in this country. Well, the solution to that, and, and they've already done a lot of work on it, is disease. They'll hit us with advanced biological warfare. Well, don't you think they already have? Don't you think that there's elements, and I'm trying to research this, but there's elements of this H3N2V yeah. that are very anomalous. The th first three things I'm noticing is we had Dr. Ridenauer on a few weeks ago. He's back on, an internist in Nevada. He wrote Pandemic uh, several years ago. We talked about 2009. I presented my data in September in Los Angeles 2009, and I had other people, including some, quote, unqualified health professionals to make negative comments about my prediction that, in fact, the plan by the World Health Organization, the United Nations, and these NGOs, and the government to completely take over if there's a swine avian pandemic, each one is getting worse. <clears throat> 2009 was the worst flu pandemic we'd had since... God knows when. This one has more replicant gene copies since the 1968 Asian flu. And uh, if it recombines with H7N3, which is now in millions of chickens in Mexico, they're killing hundreds of millions of them in Mexico, we're going to have a super, super plague. We now have the H5N1 now emerging with a 70% case fatality rate in Asia. And we now have not only SARS that's emerged in Saudi Arabia, you know, there's now a you, gentleman you, you, in England that died from it. You know, Dr. <clears throat> Bill, I, I for, for a 62-year-old fat old man, I've been pretty healthy. I haven't been sick for a long time. I'm talking years. And this hit me really hard. And I know a lot of people who are healthier than me that it's hit hard. And, and it uh, persists. It persists for months. And uh, joining us is Chris Harris, our nuclear expert. Uh, Chris, you have some updates from Fukushima, from what's going on in the NRC here, uh, and also uh, maybe some inputs of what's happening around the world in terms of nuclear safety. Uh, the fact that three major issues are not being dealt with. We have San Onofre they're trying to bring back online, which is probably going to result in a number of lawsuits against uh, Southern California Edison. Number two, we have the lack of uh, preparation against uh, serious super weather storms uh, or s coronal mass ejections that can cause power station blackouts and cause massive breakdown of the central core reactors and release of radiation. We don't have any action in terms of dealing with old technology and moving nuclear waste from uh, the sites of nuclear reactors. And we have learned some lessons from Fukushima 
that the nuclear reactors can have critical events that can occur from hydrogen explosions and many other events that break down containment that indicates that technology we've been using for 50 years here in America is not only out of date but dangerous and the like-for-like -like transfer of technology at San Onofre with their steam tube turbine technology indicates that they are criminals and they try to lie to the regulatory agencies about relicensure so they don't have to go through the regulatory process. Uh, overseas in Fukushima, they are building containment facilities around there. They're continuing to have subsidence and massive radiation releases. Uh, I'm seeing more and more evidence that there's an increase in radiation dosing of North America, not a decrease since uh, two years ago when this happened. And so what we're facing is an open wound that's going to be around for tens or hundreds of thousands of years with no substantial action. And the biggest danger I see is a degradation of the of the workers and expert technicians that actually know what's going on in the plant. So the half-life of the workers is even worse than the half-life of the radioisotopes. Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. You know, the, one of the, the latest video I posted of a survey team going into Fukushima Unit 1, if you watch the first six minutes of the 30-minute video, you'll get an idea of what kind of information you need to have at your fingertips. These guys are Working in the dark, the only light in there is, uh, and you're going through a rat's maze of tunnels and, uh, you know, uh, passageways. You'll also notice that they're wearing respiratory gear to keep uh, hot particles out of their lungs. That, uh, I've been in uh, that kind of gear before. That's not easy to breathe through. I mean, it's like trying to breathe through a piece of rubber. And uh, they're, you'll see that they're climbing the equivalent of a six-story Six stories up, you know, you, you can watch them climb. You know, I guess they're in pretty good shape, but they also know exactly where they're going, and you'll see that they're jumping over rubble, and they know exactly where to duck and everything else. Now, and, and they, they have handheld lights, but imagine imagine trying to find your way out of that if the light, if your handheld lights go out, if your flashlights go out. And also, what happened, What would you do if one of the guys have a heart attack or something? You know, you're, you're really breathing hard and everything in there. How do you get him out? You know, so a rescue operation would be easy. So I just wanted to just, you know, you brought up a good point. I wanted to, uh, you know, instill that upon everyone that it's very, uh, so that kind of uh, knowledge takes time to develop. And if you start burning off those those guys who actually know that stuff, but that that particular and specific plant. It's not really transferable in most cases to other plants. What are you going to do? So we really need to train more people to... Uh, it's going to come down to manpower each time. Um, I guess uh, another another uh, another bit of information within that same video, about minute 14, if you look up, you'll see uh, they, they, they really zoom in on it very well. Uh, obliterated duct work. Ventilation belt work, which I am very sure is part of the so-called hardened vent. If you remember, they delayed venting until the core damage was really severe. And, and the reason they, why they did that was because they had two groups of engineers arguing with each other that they should or should not vent the hydrogen because they had made a faux hydrogen venting system off the a torus for the reactor containment. And because they did that, it wasn't a real... Uh, it was able to tolerate the pressures, so the other group of engineers said, no, no, you can't vent it because it won't withstand the pressures of venting the hydrogen, and that you'll cause an explosion. They waited too long, and it did explode, and they did lose containment of the reactor and reactor number one at the very least. If your listeners listen and then go up to like about minute 14 on from there, you don't even have to watch the whole thing, you'll see exactly that, that duct work. It looks like tinfoil now. Right. Just blown out, and that's where so, I believe. Uh, at least in North America, we when we did those hydrogen uh, upgrades back in the Mark One reactor, we did it years ago. But we found lots of other defects in the engineering designs that were created by the earthquake and the tsunami that indicates that critical reactions could occur in ways that we didn't anticipate. Include hydro uh, uh, hydrovolcanic explosions, hydrogen generated supercriticality, uh, and um, other types of explosions that can occur there on site that can literally, literally be a seething cauldron of nuclear radioactive waste for untold eons. And uh, what I see happening is these, if there is ever a war between China and Japan, which is gearing up because of the fight over the Kuril Islands, 
that these nuclear sites, including Fukushima, which is a occult nuclear plutonium detonator uh, weaponized uh, radio, uh, nuclear weapon site, that the Japanese are not years away but months away from a full nuclear force that will be the third nuclear force after Russia and America. And uh, I believe China is toast. China is toast. They have Taiwan armed to the teeth. They have South Korea armed to the teeth. And now Japan, since they haven't shut down all the reactors, but they're maintaining the nuclear waste because they have a nuclear force they plan on arming very soon, if not already done. Yeah, all, all that is totally correct, uh, Dr. Bill, but here's the problem. Uh, when you uh, uh, nuke your neighbors with vast amounts of uh, thermonuclear weapons, guess what? You it live next back door. Well, That's the same thing with right. us. We're going to have, in fact, if there's one Chinese weapon that hits in a future date, the Fukushima Daiichi plant, We'll have a tsunami of radiation that'll strike North America and the Northern Hemisphere. Just one weapon. There's an equivalent of 90,000 weapons that are up to 300 times bigger than Hiroshima and Nagasaki sitting there in radioactive isotope way at the just at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. It does include Awei or many other plants. I think there's something like almost uh, 55 large style reactor sites, some with more than one reactor in Japan. And um, as much as people think they're all shut down, uh, a lot of them are shut down, but they're in a modus where they could be geared back up again within days. <clears throat> yeah, but they may be shut down, but they still have to be maintained and things have to be cooled, right, Chris? Oh, yeah. There, there's just as much work going on, if not more, when a plant is so called. So, first of all, they're so called shutdown. I mean, we call it a shutdown, but. The, you know, the, the core is always making heat that has to be removed. And uh, it, there is a lot of equipment that still must be tested. I mean, the, just the testing alone, I mean, even in when it's so-called shut down, there's a whole uh, slew of activity going on just testing each circuit. You do that uh, regardless of whether the plant's may, making power or not, and you've got to t- continue doing that. That takes a lot of time and effort, and you, things fail, and then you have to go and replace it and work or repair it. It's a very expensive proposition to keep a nuclear power plant, believe me, it's, and, it, and sure, it keeps us busy, let's put it that way. And uh, so it's not just like shutting off your car and just walking away from it and saying, you know, I'll come back a couple of days later and, and drive it. Now, it just even though it's, we call it shutdown, the thing is still uh, uh, requires uh, a, a lot of tedious uh, effort, work, and, and a good routine. I mean, it all comes down to I know exactly where I am, what I'm doing, what I'm going to be doing in the next minute. You're, every every hour is planned out as to uh, what you're going to be doing. So uh, no, it's uh, it's 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 never uh, just late to late to rest, as we say. Also, I guess uh, uh, there was some good video on uh, Unit Three spent fuel pool and all the rubble in that that I also um, made you aware of. Uh, it's, it's exactly as we thought. There's all kinds of heavy objects and everything down on top of the fuel racks. Just some more good video of it. Yes, yeah, so there's no way they can easily pull that stuff out with a simple crane because it, it's all bent and twisted. Some of the crane is actually in there too. So no, right, fell, <laughs> fell, in, fell inside. Yeah, the crane, so, crane's there. Right? Yeah, amazing. Welcome back, and uh, Chris, you have a couple of uh, announcements. One of them is kind of a new technology, but it's a little bit uh, scary and a little bit disturbing, also a little bit humorous. The uh, yeah. stemrad.com, which is this new uh, DU belt that blocks radiation, blocks gamma radiation. You can be certain it's DU packs that are shoved in this little belt developed by an Israeli company, and I'm sure it will protect against some radiation, but of course, not only your arms and head sticking out, but also the crown jewels. And if there's sky shine or radiation above the person or from the ground, there's no protection at all. It basically is going to get horizontal protection only come from a horizontal source and will protect specific target organs like the kidneys and the spinal cord. Well, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, and uh, an innovative company sent to me uh, uh, their product line saying they're, they're 
really seriously considering manufacturing. They have manufactured these, and they're looking to market them. And what they would be is a belt-like device with a harness attached to it to protect from gamma radiation first responders uh, in the area of their own stem cell generating organs. Where, where they don't want it. And I asked, I asked you to, to uh, take a look at that and see if it's uh, viable or not and, and whether it has a shot of uh, working at all. And, and so there's a little video. Yeah, that. there is a, a possibility of giving some protection, but if you get a high level of radiation to other target organs like your central nervous system, you're going to get cerebral radiation illness. You're going to get bloodborne problems that are going to affect other organ systems. Uh, and in super infections like... Uh, Decreased lymphocyte activity, so you end up with gangrene, etc. A lot of people in Japan, for example, after they drank the black rain, they developed uh, literally gangrene, and their 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 literally their organs started to to bubble and fester with gangrene while they're walking around with a pulse. Oh, that sounds delightful. Right. So people understand when you get exposed to a massive amount of radiation, and the worst of all of these is gamma. Gamma is very nasty. Well, I the only thing is, where, I, I should say, I qualify that only one radiation is worse, and that's called cosmic background radiation. Cosmic rays don't just tweak or smash your DNA, they blow it up. Well, that's the highest energy that we know of, I think. Right, right. cosmic rays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the cosmic rays yeah, come yeah, from the explosion of, of supernova. I wasn't endorsing the product, but I just, uh, just I looked at it and I said, well, and, and the product Chris uses, uses depleted it. uranium, right? Uh, I, it, it probably does. I don't, I'm not sure what the... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm certain of it. When I look at these little packs, I guarantee it from my background in nuclear radiation mm -hmm. protection. This is These are DU packs shoved into a special belt to protect target organs. Well, the bottom line is people are thinking along the lines that we, are, we need to be thinking about things we've been talking about for a while. And someone is, Actually, I, I stand oh. corrected. When I look at the front part of the belt, it does protect the crown jewels. Okay, so it does go down a bit, yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> it won't protect your kneecaps, it won't protect your ankles, it won't protect your head, uh, but it will protect the target main, main organs in your chest, uh, your heart, your spinal cord, <coughs> your kidneys, etc. People accuse me of wearing a tinfoil hat, and I always tell them, well, maybe a tinfoil underwear is actually better. Actually, but, uh, what we need to do is we need to change this. We don't wear a tinfoil hat, but we do wear depleted uranium underwear. You, you, uh, you need to be a weightlifter if you're going to walk around with too much depleted uranium underwear on, is all I can say. It will it'll increase your quad and your, uh, and your uh, calf muscles yeah. dramatically. You'll say, man, you've got development of your legs. What do you do? I wear 60-pound depleted uranium underwear. <laughs> Well, it's better to have, there is a need, and it's better to have something pre planned and thought out. And that is the kind of thinking that needs to be uh, accomplished. Otherwise, we will be caught with our pants down, I guess, <laughs> having the, having the tinfoil showing. But, uh, yeah, so. That's yeah, I, the, the, the bad thing is, we, we as a, a, a race of human beings, are going to be having our pants down for a couple hundred thousand years just because of Fukushima. And God help us if uh, we either have a, a, a major nuclear exchange on any part of this planet. Well, we, we don't even need a nuclear one. What's happening is a magma chamber at the uh, Mount Fuji in Japan is apparently halfway full. It's apparently, they're predicting that it's going to, to the chamber when it's completely full is likely to be hit by a super earthquake in the next couple of years. If that happens, there's an earthquake fault line running between Fukushima Daiichi and the Oe nuclear plant, which has a number of reactors as well. And Fukushima Daiichi, which is unstable, is getting what's called subsidence because of millions and millions of tons of water that's caused the foundations of these reactors to literally decay, twist, and turn. And as a result, we have hydrovolcanic explosions that are exploding the steam jets out into the ocean with millions of becquerels of radiation per day and going miles and miles away from the site, connecting to underground tunnels as far away as the, as the tube trains in northern Japan running to Tokyo and the greater Tokyo area. So that's why there's people that have actually taken radiation detectors to the trains uh, north of, of, of Tokyo proper and have actually found the radiation levels there off the chart. So... People in Tokyo, Japan, are not listening. 
Uh, obviously, we do have people that listen in Japan, and they have gotten neutriodine and other protectants like cell detox, glutathione, neutrotrile, things like Keeler Max and liquid zeolite to pull out the heavy metals, neutriodine to protect their mitochondria, and micro D2 to regenerate their bone marrow, etc. But what I see happening is that, by and large, people in Japan are in grave danger, but we're getting uh, accumulated micro dosages of radiation that are going to accumulate. And over the next number of years, we're going to have major illness that people won't ascribe directly to the Japanese release of radiation from Fukushima. But already, if you talk to uh, endocrinologists since the two years ago event, the rate of thyroid nodules, the rate of cancerous uh, papilloid uh, follicular changes of the thyroid gland, which is an aggressive but slow-growing tumor of the thyroid gland, have increased 400 to 600 percent, depending on which part of the country you talk to endocrinologists. So the fact is that we're already being poisoned, and people don't take it seriously getting clean water like our pure water system. We're supposed to, by the way, launch a whole house system as well that's serviceable, but you need to pull out the chlorofluorocarbons uh, like trichloroethylene, and you need to also pull out the radioisotopes and the other toxic crap because if people keep drinking water or showering with trichloroethylene and these toxic radioisotopes, five or ten years of bioaccumulation, then they're going to have a serious health problem and or be sterile or, or worse. So what I see happening is people, you know, think that I'm exaggerating. I'm not. You know, we're, we're not talking about 2013. We're talking about, say, 2023, 10 years from now, and people have bioaccumulated so many millicuries of different radioisotopes, and their health is going to significantly degrade. And when you add to that the, the deliberate uh, kill programs that the big agro is doing with genetically modified corn and other genetically modified crops, the, the sterilization of human beings, et cetera, et cetera, we're in a world of hurt. The, there are uh, there's a eugenics program that is determined to dramatically reduce the population of planet Earth, and uh, that means killing a bunch of us off. And uh, these exactly. programs are running. They're uh, they're but some of the most powerful groups uh, in the world are behind them, and uh, your mainstream media will not tell you the truth about any of it. Yeah, no, not at all. Nothing, none of it. Uh, the means you mean are not are, are not just useless; they're actually dangerous. It's dangerous for your health, dangerous for your intellect, and dangerous for your ability to prepare to listen to or watch mainstream. I call lame brain media. Yeah, it's 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 almost pure propaganda anymore. Uh, if you if you turn on just the morning newscast, in, uh, MSNBC, CNN, headline news, Fox. It's just it's drivel. It's 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 still mostly entertainment news, and you can turn that on. And and I do see, you know a lot of mornings, and I listen to them, and I say, okay, I basically learned nothing. Then I come in and turn on the computer and actually find out what's happening in the world. And I, I have yeah, to get exactly. outside of that mainstream news media box because all it is is propaganda. It's lies on top of lies. I think it's funny that giggly couch talk stuff they have on the, in the mornings. I don't even bother with that anymore. You're right. You turn on the computer and you realize what's going on for real. Yeah. That's a real shame. Well, well I guess the, so. the shame is actually just the apathy of the population. One of the things that I've noticed is whether you're dealing with friends, relatives, or just people out there that want to criticize, they don't want to put in the effort to find out the facts themselves and to ask the right questions. What they should do is just listen Find out the facts themselves, form an opinion, and then take action. Don't believe anything we say. Find out for yourself. Yeah, I, and once I, you I, get totally I think that's wonderful. I don't ask people to believe me. I Just think. Do some research. Right. And most important thing is to ask better questions. What Leonardo da Vinci said in his class when he taught art students is, I'm here to teach you to ask better questions. That's all we're here for. He was the master. <clears throat> yep. And uh, any any great teacher, that's their main goal, is to make you think to ask better questions. God and once bless. you own the okay. truth, then it's your responsibility to take action. Don't attack the messenger because you don't like the message.